okay? And now you, you know immediately how we're going to form our basis functions in 3D, right? We've already written them out previously. We've written out our trilinears. Um, it's straightforward to just uh, write out the formula now, right? So we say likewise. in 3D, right? In this case, we have number of nodes in the element equals number of nodes in 1D cube, okay? So it was that when we constructed uh, the trilinears, we observed that uh, we had um, eight degrees of freedom right? 2 cube, okay? So it is the same approach, right? So we have, um, so you recall that uh, the trilinears, right? The trilinears were right? For the trilinears, we had this sort of an element in the bi-unit domain. Okay. Right. So in the setting, once again, we simply have N A C one C two C three equals N tilde B C one N tilde C C two N tilde D C3, right, where uh, B, C, and D belong to um, one up to number of nodes in the in the 1D element, right, and A um, belongs to the set one up to number of nodes in the element, okay? So it's completely straightforward to see how we construct these. And then it's just a matter of figuring out uh, the numbering, okay? Um, the numbering in this case, of course, is A equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Okay, if we were to go to um, dry quadratics, uh, there, there are various numbering systems that um, are used depending upon the particular um, preference of the, of the people constructing these, these functions. But typically for tri quadratics, let me show you what uh, sort of numbering is followed. Okay, so I'm going to draw that again, and I'll try to draw it a little bigger.
Okay, so these would be our uh, vertex nodes or vertex degrees of freedom. I'll switch to a different color to draw the mid side nodes. The mid side nodes would be these ones. Okay, and then there are the mid face nodes, which are uh, these. I see one, two, three. Um, I guess I need to have one on this no face and um, that sort of does it, okay? And there's one final which is a mid, uh, mid body node for which I'm sort of running out of colors here but maybe I'll use black, okay? This one would be in the very center, the centroid of the, of the cube. All right, so the numbering that's typically used here is uh, the following. Uh, often the vertex nodes are numbered one through eight. And then uh, the mid side nodes are numbered next. Sorry, I, I went off. I began numbering the some of the mid face nodes instead. So I did 9, 10, 11, 12. I need to erase this one as well. Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, and, and well, okay. 9, 10, 11, 12. Actually, 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 maybe I won't use that numbering system. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is this one. Sorry. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four. Sorry. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then continuing on, we get ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and we get the, the, the mid-body node, uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27 ends with the mid-face node on the top, okay? So there we have it, and, and other, other numbering schemes are possible. Now, what one has to do in, in constructing these um, triquadratic basis functions is pick any one of these nodes, right? So let's suppose we decide to construct the basis functions for node 5, right, or degree of freedom 5.
okay. All we have to do here is observe that uh, that uh, basis function could be constructed from the n tildes by choosing for the c1 direction something, something else for the c2 direction and something for the c3 direction. What I will do now is to come back and actually say which ones. All right. So let us look at this, right. The c1 direction is this, that is the c2 direction and that is c3. All right. So that is node, that is degree of freedom 5, right. That is the basis function we want to construct. So in the c1 direction, right, when we look back at the way we number uh, the basis functions in 1D, in the c1 direction we are using the n2 and 2 tilde, okay. In the C2 direction, we are using N1 tilde and in the C3 direction also we are using N1 tilde, okay. So that is the sort of uh, check one would uh, make in writing out these basis functions in three dimensions and of course the same approach would be used in 2D as well, okay. Uh, the nice thing to observe is that it is just this very simple tensor product formula that one has to uh, use. So we construct these basis functions first in 1D and then generalize them to 2 and 3 dimensions. Um, of course, this works uh, as long as we uh, are looking at elements that exploit this tensor product construction. Right. So, it is indeed that when one can go from uh, simple 1D segments in 1D to uh, quadrilaterals in 2D and hexahedra in 3D, okay. In a couple of segments, we will look at a, a variation on that idea. All right, but we will end this segment here.